In order to do name drop in IDS, we must first make sure that we do have the name drop toolbar up on our screen. The name drop toolbar looks like, uh, it's actually a very small toolbar, and one icon looks like a double A, and then the second thing that's on the toolbar is actually a drop down arrow, and right now the box next to the drop down arrow is blank. If you do not have this toolbar up, you know, first of all, it could be anywhere around your design workspace, depending upon how your design workspace is set up. But if you don't have it up, an easy way to get to it is just go up to View, Toolbar, scroll over and down, and make sure Name Drop Bar is selected. So I do have my Name Drop Bar up, and in order to activate Name Drop, if I go here and click on the double A, I am then, I am then able to access the table. We have A, B, and C inputs, as well as numbering. So the rows, that's the amount of names or the amount of entries I will have, um, or name entries I will have. A, B, and C is the information, uh, the amount of information pieces that I can have. So for example, if I wanted a name and a number, I would put the name in A and the number in B. It will sew A and B together that first name, and then so the second name with the second number, so on and so forth. In this example, we are just going to do names. I can add more um, pieces of information for each entry just by right-clicking on the column and inserting a new section, and left-click on Insert a New Section. So now I have a scroll, dart, scroll bar down at the bottom here, and uh, conversely, I can also delete that section. So I can right click and delete the section. I do have by default 24. Um, if I do need to insert more, I can right click on 24 and insert a new name entry. So we can certainly just keep inserting until I get the number of entries that I'd like. Let's add in a couple bit, a couple more. So now you can see I've got 38 entries that I can input. So in section A, I'm going to start typing in names. So with it highlighted, I can go ahead and start typing in my name. That's the first name. If I hit the tab key, it actually goes over to the next section. I'm just going to keep hitting tab until I get to number two. Then I can keep going. So I'm going to enter in about 10, 10 names. And actually for the next ones, I'm just going to start entering numbers. And the reason I'm doing this is, is so we can actually see uh, some different options that we do have on the name drop or the, the print worksheet. Okay, so after I have those all in, I'm going to left click on A and focus on my settings for section A. With these settings, you can see over on the right hand side, I have different options. I can um, do a vertical layout, which would put the lettering or the numbering on top of each other. Um, but I want my lettering to be horizontal, so vertical layout I will leave unchecked. The second one is called auto space. This is the spacing between the, uh, the letters or the numbers that I have in here. So each letter, um, it will automatically space to what the program thinks is best or the automatic kerning for this. 
Um, you can enter in your own space. So for example, if you want one millimeter between each letter, you can certainly type in one. I typically like to leave it up to the computer and I will left click on auto space and check mark it. And this now goes um, gray. I can't input any entries here because I do have auto space up. The size is going to be the size of my lettering or really the size of my capital letter. Um, kind of my largest letter of that area. Uh, I can use the drop down arrow and use any one of these numbers in here. Now we are in millimeters. 25.4 is approximately an inch. Uh, I can highlight any one of them and choose it and left click or I can highlight the size and enter in my own size if I'd like. The alignment mode. Left, middle, or right. That means each name within section A is going to align um, you know, with each other to the left of the bounding box to the middle of the bounding box or to the right of the bounding box. I typically leave it as middle because uh, it's a little bit easier. It's centering each name uh, with the whole list. Next is the font property. With the font property, I can use any true type font that I have in my computer. And, um, you know, when I choose the font, it will, uh, we'll see that when it actually um, generates. So I'll actually just leave it as, uh, we'll, we'll just do a different one. We'll do a maze. You can bold or italicize it or both. Now you can actually, if you have other settings from a previous, um, you know, a previous entry, you can hit load. And let's say I have Acme Corporation with these settings. I can certainly choose Acme Corporation and hit open and it actually changes to the settings I had for that. Um, let's go back to what we had before and I want to save those new settings or what I chose before. I think I had this at 18 and I want to save them as a new set of um, you know name drop settings so I can hit save and then I can put in here you know I want I want these settings so Corp A, and I'll save that. So next time I have to do more names for them, I have those settings right at my fingertips, and I can just hit load even before I enter in the names. So then I'll go ahead and hit OK. Now what the program does uh, on the in the design file is that it'll actually go ahead and generate each name on screen, and you'll see with the drop down. Now I can see, you know, I can view each name. I'm not sure if this, this lettering actually has um, numbers available because each font can be a little bit different, but it looks like this does, so that's good. good. So each letter or each um, uh, name looks like it's the same color. Well, when we export the design, each name is going to have a different color. And this is going to be important for the machine side. So Susan is going to have a different color than Michael. And that's all in the color changes or in the stops. Now with the ZSK machine, when we load the DST, uh, each color comes in as a stop, which is great. So all we have to do is make sure we've got the right needle programmed in for the first design, or the first name, I should say and then leave everything else as stops. And the reason is, is because, because each name will be a stop, it will sew out one name and then stop. The machine will stop. So you take out that garment that, sew, that you sewed the name on, put in the next garment and hit start again. And it'll stitch the next name. At the end of that name, it will stop again. You take that out, put in the next garment, so on and so forth. So we cannot see that right now but we will be able to see that in our export. Now we can use the export too, but there's a little bit of a, um, a trick with this. So with export too, it's really nice on other designs because it'll color match um, our colors in the DST format uh, on my IDS. And that's good for regular designs, but not for name drop because we need them to be different colors. So we're going to have a kind of a two-step process. First, 
we are going to choose export to. When we choose export to, it's processing the names and it's processing them to save as different colors. Now we just have to say where we want to save them to. So I'm going to go ahead and save it to my desktop and I'm going to name it ND for name drop and I'll hit save. Now when it does save to the desktop, it saves two files. It saves a DST file and an RGB file. Well, what I need to do is I actually need to get rid of that RGB file. So I'm going to open up my computer and I am going to open up the desktop and I am going to find the file that I just saved which is ND and typically and what I'll do here is I'll sort it by name so it's a little bit easier to see ND will have a .dst as well as a .rgb we can see that right here ND.dst ND.rgb the second part of this process is to right click on this and delete it so I want to delete this RGB file because that can cause some issues. So after I delete it, I'll go ahead and close it out. Now what I want to do is show you what the import of the design will look like. And if I go to File and Import, and I'll use Import 2, I will find ND, hit Open, and now I have a whole bunch of names on top of each other, and they're all different colors. Each name will have its own color. And so I'm going to go ahead and look at the print worksheet to show you what this will look like. So on screen, it'll look like a jumbled mess. But if you print out your worksheet, which I'm going to hit print preview, um, with a lot of names, I typically want to print an extra color sequence icon list page. And I'll show you why. If I hit preview, here I have each name and the order each name is going to go in. So, um, if I go to the next page, oh, actually I don't have enough names here, um, so let's do this again, but, uh, so I need two more, but this can take, you know, if, if you have hundreds of names, you're not going to be able to see all those names. So, I need to print an extra sheet which has these, uh, these thumbnails. So I'll go ahead and close that out. Let's go back to our first design. So it looks like here it didn't save all my names. So I'm inserting, you know, enough names so we can see. And here I'm just going to use letters. Okay, and now we'll go ahead and export again. I'll just write over the other one. I'll save that. And then I want to go back to my desktop and make sure I delete that RGB file. So I'm going to right click and I'll delete that go back to a new design import that file and now let's go to our print preview print an extra color sequence and so now if we look at the next page 
you can see I've got all my names in here. Um, whereas the previous page only went up to P, the next page has everything included. Um, so that's why you would want to do that. So this file is actually going to go into the machine and you are going to, um, you know, that's what it's actually going to sew. So that's how we do the name drop in here. If you do have any questions, please let me know. Thanks.